Hi I'm Ben, welcome to my book corner. Today I'm doing a bit of a catch up on some books that I have not actually done a review of on the channel and I'm not going to do full reviews on either. So these are intended to be rapid fire coverings of six books that I have read or attempted to read. So in theory this shouldn't take too long. I'm going to cover each of the books, touch on what they're about, throw them in a the tier list, move on to the next one. And if you want to see where these sit on the tier list compared to the other books I've already reviewed, that video will be going up on the last day of June, so you can always check it out there. So with that all said, let's jump in. The Vessel by Adam Neville. This is a short horror novella that came out last year. I thought it was older than this actually, to be honest. And this is a paranormal horror about a carer who's looking after a really, really old woman for half a day every night but supernatural and paranormal things are going on. And this is my first and only DNF of the year so far. It's pretty well written from what I can tell, but I have found this really hard going and actually quite uncomfortable in some places. If you're a fan of sort of paranormal horror, then you probably appreciate this, but this is one that is definitely not for me. From one horror to another, we have Horror at Martin's Beach, released in 1923, so a century ago at this point and written by Lovecraft and Sonia Green. This is the story of what happens when fishermen catch a giant monster in the ocean, and I hated this. Might be because it was written in Old English, I just could not get along with this at all. This goes in the It Exists tier for me, and continues my bad habit of having issues when it comes to reading older, or what I would call foundational text for a genre. The next title is the independently published Marcus Misadventures, book one in the Catatonic series. This was written by Jeremy M. Moore, who we've already covered, who released One for the Road as well. And this goes in good tier for me. The basic premise is Marcus discovers a book in the archives under the pharmaceutical company where he works, takes it home, reads it, starts mixing various chemicals and accidentally turns his cat into a familiar. There's more to it than that, but that's kind of the basic premise of what causes all the problems. It is book one in the series as well, and I'm looking forward to reading the next one. That brings us on to three Terry Pratchett books. I did the review of Guards Guards not that long ago, and I immediately reread the following three books in the Guards series of books. Starting with Men at Arms, this is the story of the watch being forced to get bigger and take on more watchmen. Specifically, a more diverse group of watchmen, trolls, dwarves, and a woman, shocking I know, are all taken on now. The overall plot is actually quite similar to the previous one in that people have discovered that Ankh-Mar Park has a king who has not taken the throne and decides to force the event by trying to assassinate the lord of the city. Once again, the watch manages to foil this and they get a new dartboard. That leads us into Feet of Clay, another story where there's an attempt to overthrow the Lord of the City. Slightly different means this time though. And this introduces golems into the mix. Golems are large automated humanoid clay robots, for want of a better term, who literally obey the magic words that are put in their head. And there's some allegories for slavery here, as basically they are trying to get themselves free and be recognised as citizens as best they can, basically by working hard enough and a wage to buy themselves. In some ways, this is the darkest of the three watch books so far. Now, all both of those books sit in gold tier quite easily for me, but this is followed by possibly my favourite of all the watch books, and that is Jingo. When an island magically rises out of the sea, the two warring nations, well, they're not warring at the time, but they were afterwards, of Ankh-Mar Park and Clatch, try to claim this land for themselves. This looks at xenophobia, racism, colonialism, and also the short-sightedness of people who try to take advantage of situations for their own ends. And with the world as it is at the moment, this is actually quite a timely book in many regards. This, for me, is one of my goated Terry Pratchett book so clearly it goes in the goat tier for me. So that fetches me onto the most recent book I've read, The Cat Who Saved Books. This was originally written by Suzuki Natsukawa and was translated into English by Louise Hill Kawai. I hope I've managed to pronounce those correctly. And this is a book that I bought on a complete whim. 
Rintaro is devastated by the death of his grandfather who's been bringing him up and he kind of inherits his old second-hand bookshop and he tries to close himself away in a world just of books and reading when a magic tabby cat, ginger tabby cat to be precise, appears through the wall and takes him on numerous adventures into labyrinths to help free books from people who claim they love them but are not treating them in a loving way. This is a book about personal growth and it's a book about overcoming the grieving process as well. But more than that, this is a book about the love of books and the love of reading in particular. This is one of the most quotable books that I have read in a long time and it easily again goes in goat tier for me. If you love the art of reading itself, then this is a book I think you should definitely read. For me personally, I absolutely love this one. And with that, that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed. Have you read any of those? What would you think about them? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I'll catch you all next time.